and the unfortunate thing happened. And Alfie Anido. And Alfie Anido, I had absolutely nothing to do with Alfie Anido. Uh, truth be told, Katrina was in love with him, and I was at that time happy because she had a, a series of bad relationships before that, and she seemed to be really, really happy, and, and I could see uh, that they were really in love. I had, I had seen Alfie since we were kids in, in Ateneo, both in grade school and in high school. And I knew Alfie, and, and I liked him, and he was popular, and he was uh, a very handsome young fellow, and I thought my sister was totally in love with him. Now, like any two lovers, they probably had their quarrels. Um, that night, um, I remember that night well, I, ha I was eating dinner at Miyako. <laughs> I was home again on vacation from the States. I was studying in the States at the time. And I was home for Christmas. I think it was Christmas break at that time. And I asked. Uh, Senator Onasan, who was the, the chief of security of my father at the time, if he wanted to go out to dinner, to catch up. And we went to dinner, eat all you can, Miyako, right close to Dusit Hotel now, in, uh, along Pasay Road, near Edsa. And we were just eating tempura the whole night, and then he, he gets on the radio, and he, there's a report that, uh, that there's, Alfie is driving really, really fast on the way back to Makati from Antipolo. And I go, is Katrina with him? And, and he goes, yes. And then a few minutes later, I don't know exactly how long, uh, Katrina is at, ho at home. So we proceed to continue with our dinner. And then I think we were about to leave already. Uh, we, paid, we paid for the, the bill. And I believe we were already on our way out of the, the restaurant and another radio message came uh, and Katrina was on her way to Alfie's house in hysterics. So I go, well, let's go. Let's see what's going on. We had, the, we had no clue what was going on really. When I got to, uh, to Alfie's house in Bel Air, I started to hear Katrina screaming inside the house. So like a brother, yeah. my sister's crying, you rush in and see what's going on. And she was, I think at that time, Babita was hugging her, or one of the sisters was hugging her. And Alfie, Alfie, she goes, Alfie. So I started to go up this, the house, and I looked at, around. The door was open, and I looked inside, and I saw Alfie's, yeah. Alfie's head was swollen already. At, at, at that point, I saw the gun on the floor. It had already happened. Eventually, you settled in the States, sir. Was this the reason why you felt you had to leave the country? No, actually, I left, I left the country uh, much earlier than the Alfie Anido incident. But for the same reason. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, there was, there was those series of, of incidents where um, we, my, because my father was who he was, there was this... Uh, effort to really vilify him and the members of his family. And the weakest link was basically me. Because... This did not happen to your sister? Well, Katrina was, was more of a... Uh, was more active in the social circles. I always tended to be around uh, people who were quiet. You know, we, we would go out for, on our motorcycles and go riding in the mountains. And that was basically my life. You know, that I had a totally different mindset mm -hmm. at the time. You're closer, no? We're, with, we're, with Katrina. Yes, we, we, we've, we've always been close. We, like any brothers, uh, siblings, we've always had our ups and downs. But, you know, we'd fight, we'd make up, we'd fight, we'd make up. It would be always like that. But, you know, we would be there for, every, for each other. I mean, I know she would, she would die for me, and I know I would die for her. And like, in the States, you had a different life. I had a quiet life. I had a really peaceful, enjoyable, happy life in the States. I, I was able to earn a living doing what I like, working on motorcycles, working on, on guns, working on machines. Um, I owned a machine shop. I owned a, a, a motorcycle shop that eventually became a small dealership. Um, I was able to, to, to earn enough to have a comfortable life, not extravagant, but uh, enough to be able to, to have something there and have something here. And whenever I felt that I needed to come home for a a spell, I would come home and have the resources to do so. And 
And uh, whenever I wanted to pursue my education, I would go back to the States and pursue it and at, at my time and on my terms. So your passion, motorbikes, guns? Anything with metal. So Anything some metallic. people would, you think it's fair for people to say you have a violent streak because of all of this? I, I suppose people will, will, will uh, misconstrue that. Um, motorcycles have always had a bad rap, but I always enjoyed racing motorcycles. And uh, my shooting has always been competitive shooting. So mm -hmm. it was always, it, it was always had the aspect of sport in it. Mm -hmm. It was not just purely a lifestyle. Um, but I can see where people might, might misconstrue that as having a, a, a violent tone. Uh, but I, I, I was a competitive shooter very early on. I was a competitive motorcycle racer very early on. And it was because of the accidents of, uh, of racing that I needed something else to occupy my time and I got into competitive shooting. And, and for a while, when I was in the States, I augmented my, my income joining the shooting circuit. So it, it was something that I enjoyed, I was good at, and I earned a little bit of money on. You never had problems with temper, sir, as others would say you... I had a, I had a, uh, I had a, a, a temper when I was young. Um, only because I enjoyed being left alone. Uh, I never started a fight in my life, Carmela. Believe it or not, as bad as the press may have uh, uh, shown me to be, I, I never was the one that instigated any fight in my life. And I can say this both here and while I was living in the United States. Um, I, lived, I lived the life of a guy who loved just to to tinker with anything that was made out of steel or aluminum or titanium and and I love the, the, the engineering aspect of it and, and that's what gave me joy. What brought you back sir, to the Philippines? When I had completed my master's in business administration, actually I had that, I had one more sem, one more sem to go. Um, my father needed somebody to run the family business. Jaka. Jaka. And I had some experience in running parts of Jaka when I was growing up. But the, the lady who was the overall manager at the time decided to, to leave and, and pursue another career uh, and grow her own business. And so my father thought that it was time for one of the family members to come in and step up. Were you forced to come back? No, 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 actually. But we had, a, we had an agreement. I said, uh, I, will, I will uproot myself from the States I'll give you five years of my life. After five years, I intend to come back and resume my life in the U.S. That didn't happen. You entered politics. The sneaky thing was, the sneaky thing was, uh, two years, uh, th three years into the agreement, he decides to field me in Cagayan politics. Out of your... Uh, kicking and screaming. <laughs> but you still followed him. I followed him because I, I, I believed in his, uh, I, very early on, I believed that my father was a wise man. In spite of your misunderstanding? In spite, despite of our uh, ch uh, checkered uh, relationship, uh, we've, we've, I've always maintained my respect for my father and my mother. Uh, truth be told, my mother would probably be the wiser of the two. Okay. <laughs> my mother is uh, a little bit more uh, uh, acute in her understanding of people and their motives. So was it your mother that convinced you? To no, run? my mother did not want me to enter politics because she knew that I did not like it. Um, but you lasted I, three terms. I lasted three terms. Uh, it, it, I would have, if I had to do it all over again, I would have done it differently. Had I known then what I know now, I probably would have put in more effort on those three terms than I, than, than I had. Because, sir, when you were a congressman for nine years, three terms, you weren't really that um, active. active. No. I, 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 the, the agreement was five years of my life was be given here. Then when there was a, a monkey wrench thrown into that equation, he asked me to stay for one term. Monkey wrench. Please explain what well, happened. Well, you know, he threw in the monkey wrench. The basically, the basically uh, I was not able to complete the five years and go back to the States. So in 1998, the monkey wrench was that I was forced to stay here for another, another three years 
because of that first term in Congress. Uh, but after I completed that first term, they asked me again to run for re-election because there was nobody willing to step up. And as, you followed him again. And again, like a schmuck, <laughs> I, I acceded. And then after 2004, I decided I've had, I've had it with politics. If people want to kick me out, I'm not going to campaign, and, which I did not. But you're on your last term then. I still won my last term. <laughs> Surprisingly, I still won my last term. Uh, having not campaigned a single day and having not voted for myself, never it, in those three in those in those weeks that uh, that uh, that led up to the 2004 uh, campaign period and election, I did not campaign a single day and I did not even vote for myself. On election day, I was in Batangas, ready to lose, ready to lose. Uh, so I had what? I had I had really thought that I had lost that election. But somehow the people of, of Cagayan voted for you. Voted for me. So because of that, because of that, and only because of that, I realized that perhaps this is where God wanted me to be. But what would be your biggest accomplishment in those first three terms? If people were to check the records and they are open to check the records, please do they will be hard-pressed to find any single tinge of corruption. Every single centavo was accounted for. Every single uh, town was given its due out of the pidaf of Jack and Rile. And I think that is the legacy that, that we have left there, my wife, both my wife and I. So, uh, when it was a time of reflection uh, towards the end of the third term, whether or not we could still resume our life in the States or yes. this was where we were going to be for the rest of our lives, we decided to take root here. And so my wife and That's I... That's your personal decision at that time. That was already my personal decision at the time. Stay. We wanted to stay. And we wanted to serve, surprisingly. We but after your third term, you never considered running for the Senate? There was no way for me to have been successful at, at anything beyond congressman at, during that decade. Mm, because? If you, because my father was, was on his, one of the ebbs, one of the troughs of his political, uh, political life. He had lost in 2001. And whatever goodwill he built up during EDSA, uh, and, and the subsequent years in, in the Senate was basically eroded by the Clarissa Ocampo mm -hmm. uh, incident. And I think uh, that, was the, that was the issue that threw him out of the Senate in 2001. So the name of Juan Ponce and Rile was not something that was very quite popular at the time. And, and you know, the interesting thing is, and, and give, to give credit where credit is due, he is one of those few rare individuals, not that he's because he's my father, who was able to, again, take himself out of this hole and reinvent himself in 2004 and 2010. And I think he has re rededicated his life to the Filipino people and in the service of the Filipino people. And that is why I think the Pil Filipino people are seeing uh, uh, the attributes of, of good leadership in him right now. 